Okay, so we are talking about the Vaitava. We got him push on here. And of course we do so with great joy. Vaibhava, the place at the starting point before we went off off topic was that Vaibhava means Aishwarya, and I was saying that Aish, the real Aishwarya is Madhurya. The real, the highest thing is not the Aishwarya, but the highest thing is the Madhurya. So this means that we're putting things on, we, this, is, this is like we've gone full circle. It's like you're going full circle. Because you start spiritual life, you start spiritual life by looking for the highest thing. And then somehow or another you come around and you see that the intimacy, love, these things are really the highest thing. And when you see the, when you can, when you can bring the two together, because if you don't, then the love and so on becomes prakritan, becomes mundane, becomes material. What is the point? Loving with attachment, with material attachment, self, with a hankar, abhiman, and so on. So what we have to do is we have to understand the pure, the, the, the lila of Vrindavan. We have to understand the selfless love of Vrindavan. And when we understand the selfless love of Vrindavan, it can manifest it in our lives. And that's, that's, that's what the perfection is. Not that we're fine. Aishwarya, as soon as you talk about Aishwarya, you're talking about Bhaiti Bhakti. As soon as you talk about, you know, uh, God uh, making orders and commands and, and, uh, and so on, uh, then immediately we're in the, I, we, we, as soon as you're in the sense of obligation, uh, the obligation that comes from being in a position, in a subsidiary position, I'm a tiny jiva, God is so great, therefore I have to follow God's orders, you know, I have to, already there's a defect, there's even a logical defect in that. Because it puts God on a platform where he's, he, he's, what does God need with me for that I should follow his orders? You know, that's, there's a, there's a logical, the, the logical defect is there. The real, the real thing is that, you know, we say that God wants our love. Well, you may say, why does God want our love? Because, how can you argue with that? Of course God wants our love. Everybody wants love. Everybody wants to experience love. Everybody wants to give love. Everybody wants to experience love. So that's, since that is the essence of our being, you could say, it's a psychological truth. We don't recognize it necessarily because we are, our desires become corrupted and so we want fame, we want, music, we want money, we want, uh, uh, we want uh, success, all these things. We start to, we want Aishwarya. And so we attribute Aishwarya to, to God Right? But actually, if we look at our, if we, if we analyze the human psychology, the real thing is, that, that is, is, is to experience love. The only trouble is that because we're self-centered, we want love to come to us, we want to be the vishaya, and we don't know how to be ashraya. So if we learn how to be ashraya, that means to be a devotee, that means to, be a, to learn to be a lover. Right? To be a devotee means to learn to be a lover. And if you want to be loved, then become a devotee, because a devotee is worthy of loving. A devotee, a devotee has the character, when we talk about 26 qualities of a devotee, what are the 26 qualities of a devotee? Those are qualities that make a, a person lovable. You want to be loved, become a devotee, then you'll have the qualities and be, everybody will love you. Hmm? Nobody loves an arrogant person, but humble people everybody likes. Nobody likes someone who's intolerant. The tolerant person everybody likes. Yeah? Nobody likes a person who always wants to be glorified. But if someone is always glorifying others, everybody likes them. Right? So it's not a question of artificially trying to, you know, like, uh, like Dale Carnegie there with the how to win friends and influence people. Mm -hmm. But one of the first things I noticed when I read that Dale Carnegie's book, because I was, I'd already come back, the first time I read uh, that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, I was already, I'd been a devotee for 15 years. So I thought, my God, he's just talking about being a Vaishnava. <laughs> he's talking, if you want to make friends and influence people, be a devotee. Yeah? Because he's ta talking that these are the qualities of a person that, uh, you would expect that this is the way that a devotee should cultivate his, char his personal character. So we want to be loved, but the most important part of being love lovable 
is to learn how to love yourself. And that's the essence of a bhakta. Because a bhakta is learning how to love. A bhakta is loving, learning to love God, and through loving God, learning how to love uh, all creatures, to love all beings, to love everything as being manifestations of, 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 of God. So this is already outside the realm of Aishwarya. This is already we're in the, we're in the realm of Madhurya. So the Vaibhava, so, now, so, so this is really what he's talking about here. In this thing, this, this idea that Paramad Guta Vaibhava, the Paramad Guta Vaibhava, so Param the Supreme and the most astonishing Vaibhava, the most astonishing Vaibhava, the most astonishing Aishwarya, the most astonishing opulence or, or majesty that is present in Radha is Adbhut and Paramadbhut. Adbhut means rasa. The Adbhut will mean rasa. Yes, of course, all the, you know, it's always adbhut when we see people doing magnificent things. There's no doubt about that. So that, 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 that is uh, also rasa. But the paramadbhut, the paramadbhut, the supreme adbhut, the most wonderful and most rasic thing is in prem. And in Radha, that prem is because she has come to the point where Krishna is under her control. By saying Krishna, it means actually the entire world is at her disposition. It means that, the, it means that everything, Krishna is everything, so everything is at her disposition. She has everything. Right? She's the girl who has everything. Alright, <clears throat> so now he's arguing this, so he's making this, he's, he's, he's been explaining here. He's saying, he's, and so I was wondering yesterday exactly what he was meaning, and I'm still not quite sure of it. So Brahmeshwara Adya Pekshaya, so he's, he, he, he's, the Radharani's Vaibhava is the Paramad Bhut Vaibhava. So now he's saying that, that he's trying to discuss these three words. So he says that for Brahma and Ishwara, for all these, for Lord Brahma and for Maheshwara and the uh, Sanatana uh, and Sanaka and Narada and all the rest, that, <coughs> that uh, Radharani's, for, for to the, to, uh, as compared to them, Radharani is all three, Paramad Bhuta Vaibhava. Uh, and then, he, we were already, th those things were said. And for the gopis, he says that mostly the, the question is the Adbhut, that Radharani is more wonderful or more rasika than, Rad, than the other gopis. And then Sri Krishna Peksha Vaibhava Tomiti. So that more than Krishna, the opulence or the glory is greater than even in Krishna. So now he gives the reason. Kincha. Sri Krishna Sya Parama Rasika Tvena. I love this word. Rasika. Parama Rasika. So Krishna is the supreme Rasika. Everything is being measured in terms of Rasika, being a Rasika. So Krishna is the Parama Rasika. <coughs> so Sri Krishna Sya Parama Rasika Tvena. Shiro Dharja Paraga Tvat. Priyayak so bhagyadikyam iti vaibhavam. So now he's explaining the word vaibhavam. So the vaibhavam, the, the glory, is in her sobhagya. So sobhagya, sobhagya here, the word sobhagya means good fortune. Okay? Sobhagya means good fortune. Sometimes you have that word sohagini in, in Hindi, and it's not a Sanskrit word, sohagini. You hear that? So often a, a bride is called sohagini. And Radharani is sometimes called Shama Sohagini. You may hear that word in Vrindavan. Shama Sohagini. So Sohagini is a corruption of Sobhagini, that, 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 from that, that she's a good fortune. Because it comes from the idea that, uh, that uh, the, the wife or the, the woman brings good fortune to the man. Right? When you say that Lakshmi comes into the house, when a, when a, when a man in India, when a, when a man gets married, then uh, it's like Lakshmi Devi is coming into the house. So she's so bhagya, she's bringing good fortune, uh, she's bringing good fortune to the husband, and she's bringing good fortune to the whole family. Right? So, <clears throat> so it says that Radharan, so the Vaibhava, the opulence or the glory or the majesty of Radha is in her great good fortune. So what is her fortune? It says that Sobhagyadikya, uh, greater good fortune, Radharani's greater good fortune lies in the fact that Krishna, who is the supreme Rasika, he wants to take the dust of her feet on his head. 
we've been talking about this already. This is a, this is really our kind of our our Mool Sutra, right? taken from the Gita Govinda. This is our Mool Sutra that we that uh, that uh, that uh, Krishna wants to take. That Krishna is coming, bowing down to Radha, accepting Radha as his guru. That's also there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita from Govinda Lilamrita. When Radharani uh, asks, uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, Saki, Vrinda Devi, she says, where are you coming from, Vrinda Devi? She says, I'm coming from your Kunda, from Radha Kunda. I would say, what were you doing there? You know, Krishna is there. What was Krishna doing? Oh, he's learning how to dance. You translated this one. Krishna is learning how to dance. Well, who's he learning from? From you. <laughs> You're his guru. He's learning from you. How is he? I'm over here and he's over there. How's he learning from me? Because he sees you everywhere and he's dancing around trying to you know, follow these hallucinations he's having of you everywhere. <laughs> he's running, looking for you behind the trees and in the bushes, amongst the flowers, hearing you with the birds so on. So that's the kind of a, a funny way of saying the idea, but presenting the idea that really Radha, Radharani is teaching Krishna about Prem. That's why Krishna, that's why, that's why he has to become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in order to learn about Prem. Yeah? I have a question. Um, how, come, how come Krishna would need our love if he seems so fulfilled with loving Radha? So why would it matter to him? Uh, well, that's that. In order to understand that, you have to understand about sakhi tattva. You have to understand what, what it means to be a manjuri. Mm -hmm. So the, the the idea is not that the idea is not so much that uh, the idea is not so much that uh, that it's our love in that sense. Of course, it is, but we're we you know. The, the idea is that we're participating in that love. So, so we the, the 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 idea is that by having by having uh, uh, playing a role and participating, you enhance what we're doing is we're engaged in enhancing that 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 lila. But it's a bit it it, it takes a. a I don't know if I can explain it in a short while. Maybe we'll, over the time as we go on, we'll, we'll, the explanation will become clear. I hope you don't mind me brushing you off. <laughs> I think I'm brushing no, you off. <laughs> because, yeah, it's, it's not exactly that... Uh, because, after all, the, the tattva still remains the same. We're not... We are, we, we are still jivas. We're still tiny fragments of consciousness. We're not the... We're not the whole thing. So, yes, you're right. That's why we become dasis of Radha instead of trying to compete with Radha. We're not going to think, we don't think that this is in most religions and even in, in Hinduism you have, let's say, for instance, Mirabai. This is the big uh, uh, discussion about Mirabai. So Mirabai has written many beautiful poetries about love for, 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 uh, for Krishna. But at the same time, we don't, uh, you know, um, and you can, uh, by all means, you know, sing Ra uh, Mirabai's songs. There's nothing wrong. There's some of them are most beautiful. I love them. She's taking from a position of, uh, you know, and, and actually, most you know, Vidyapati and Chandidas and so on, they are, they are channeling the sentiments of, of Radha. So in a way, you could say that Radha is reflected in the songs of Mirabai. It's not, uh, it's not that she, but we, but because she doesn't glorify Radha, therefore somehow or another, uh, you know, directly experience Radha Bhakti through her. And that's why they say that it's a limitation. But we don't, but we say that she's trying, that, that in some way she's maybe competing with Radha, or she thinks that she's equal to Radha, or she thinks that she is Radha. And that those things are not tasteful to us as, as Gaudiya Vaishnavas. So we don't want to compete with Radha. That's, you know, what's the point of competing with Radha? If Chandravali, you know, says, if Chandravali uh, is, uh, you know, it says in the beginning of Ujjal Nilmani, that of all uh, the, the devotees and all the gopis, there are two who are greatest. One is Chandravali and one is Radha. 
पथयोर अप्युभयोर मध्ये राधिका सर्वता अधिका सेज दैट अब द टू ऑफ देम राधारानी इन ऑल रिस्पेक्ट्स इज सुप्रीम इज सुपीरियर सो इवन चंद्रावली हैज नो आई वाज इंटरेस्टिंग आई डिड अ आई डिड सम रिसर्च इन जस्ट अ हिस्टोरिकल थिंग स्कॉलरली बिजनेस हियर दैट चंद्रावली in in old texts because chandravali doesn't exist in as a separate person in uh, texts older than the 15th or 16th century right? so in in the texts of the 14th and 15th century radharani is called chandravali she has that's one of her names so chandravali and radha are the same person mm. so then chandravali and radha are the same person yes and then uh, and then they get separated out they get split up so where they get split up they get split up at this uh, you know i don't know if it's rupa goswami himself who does that but certainly prior to rupa goswami i don't see any evidence that there's chandravali and radharani or said they're the same person and then you get the, and then and then he separates them out in order to separate out their the, the two kinds of character that are there so that uh, you know that, that radharani is vamatva and chandravali's dakshinatva the radharani's radharani's uh, more uh, aggressive approach to love <laughs> and and uh, chandravali's rather more submissive approach to love and to draw a distinction between those two because in the in some of those like for instance in in sri krishna kirtan which of of all the leela books you see and you have the you have of course gita govinda and you have siddhanta is coming from bhagavatam but then in the folk tradition there's a huge folk tradition that doesn't come in sanskrit and the most important one of those is chandidas so chandidas uh, wrote uh, a book called shri krishna or didn't write a book but he was a performer and he would sing uh, a kirtan so but he very very you know he wrote a, quite a, a a substantial book which he would perform of songs about radha and krishna radha and krishna lila so in that radharani starts out as a 11 10 11 year old girl and go on to, for it covers a period of about 5 years before krishna goes away to uh, goes away to mathura it's a very very interesting book because it tells us so but those leelas that are in that book you know those leelas those those are the ones really that are being taken and rupa goswami is is you know you using that as a source for a lot of his of, of his uh, of his material of his leela material of course a lot of original in rupa goswami as well like okay i'm going to move on here try to do a little bit more mm -hmm. i'm sorry i'm bit off topic today sometimes it happens so sadyo vashi karana churnam iti bhakshati eva so we've already discussed that that radrani the dust of radrani slowed his feet is like the magic powder that uh, uh, you know like the love potion the magic love potion that that brings krishna under her control so so then gopi drishtya so from the point of view of the gopis adbhutatvam so the marvelous nature or the adbhut you know, we're talking about paramadbhuta vaibhava so the vaibhava she was saying here that krishna is taking shelter of her or wanting the dust of her feet that is the the uh, glory of the uh, uh, radharani's glory and now the amazing thing from the point of view of the gopis is that oho so bhagyam krishna pyevam so when the gopis see radharani's good fortune so we're saying that vaibhava is the good fortune and the gopis they think look at this eh? look at her good fortune look at how how glorious radha is they are the ones who are amazed because she is krishna krishna pyevam krishna is behaving like this krishna is submissive to her krishna has become submissive to radharani because of the power of her love so the power of her love that's the that's the uh, that's the opulence that's the power that's the aishwarya So aho so bhagyam krishna pyevam iti tatascha and then iti got to put this got a pen somewhere just to give me a pen so I can just put it in there so that I, one of the big problems with sanskrit is there's no punctuation not proper punctuation doesn't exist 
And now when we do Sanskrit texts, when I do the Sanskrit texts for the Grantha Mandir, then I put punctuation in. I put commas in, I put, uh, you know, uh, dashes in and things like that, because Sanskrit doesn't have that. And very few, some of the texts do now, so they start putting it in. Quotation marks and things like that. But if you look at a manuscript, it drives you crazy. They don't even separate the words. So, tatascha brahmadina tu kaimutyena paramadhuta tvamiti. So, he says, so if you look from the point of view of Lord Brahma and the others, uh, then what's the question? The Adbhut, the, 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 the Vaibhava is in Radha, the Adbhuta is in the Gopis, and the Paramadbhuta, the, the Paramadbhuta Vaibhava, the, the whole, the Parama part, that's in Brahma and uh, in the other gods because it's so, it's, it's beyond, practically speaking, their ability to comprehend. How can they comprehend? It's very interesting to think when you, when you just contemplate that. It's because a person who, you know, when a person has, is, uh, has a particular kind of sangskar, a particular kind of uh, nature that's developed and throughout their lifetime, it makes them incapable of seeing certain things. You know, and so, you know this is quite a, a, a psychological you know, platitude, it's a psychological truism that uh, everybody knows, that if you have a, you, you, you see or you don't see according to your capacity to see or not to see. And sometimes you're, if, you're so, if you're so blinded by a particular point of view or a particular way of understanding or a particular way of being, then you just don't see the things that are right in front of your face, even when they're to an, a, a, anybody else, they would be self-evident. This is quite true. And the opposite is also people see things that aren't there when they, when they, when they have that kind of uh, conditioning. So Brahma, Ishwara, and these people, they have a particular kind of conditioning. If, people are, if people's pr principal state of consciousness is to see Aishwarya, you know, people's mentality, most people are in the mentality where Aishwarya is the important thing. The, you know, fame, glory, riches, these are the important things. And they can't see even somebody, you know, the, the reality of love and the importance of love. They, because they've become uh, you know, so conditioned by the necessity to do other things. This is what's wrong with our world. <laughs> The thing with our world, everybody wants to, you know, have more and more. They don't know how to live simply. So then it goes on. Evam purva purvam kaimutyam gyeyam. So this is, you know, he's saying here that kaimutyam means that uh, it goes without saying. Right? It's like uh, it, it goes without, uh, the purva purvam for each one of these stages from the Radha to the Gopis to the Brahma and so on. That they, you know, that they don't don't comprehend what what went before. It goes without saying that that, that you, they can't. They, they, it's beyond their ken. So now he's going on with another one. We because time is uh, gone. I, I, I wasted a lot of time today, but I'd rather enjoy doing that. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me. But we'll go start. We'll start because he's got a yadva here. So we can, from Yadva means that we, it's a new subject, that we're going to give an, an alternate explanation. So tomorrow we have the alternate explanation of Paramadbhuta Vaibhava. Okay? Mm. So this is, today is preparatory for tomorrow. Yes. You have a question? Yes, go ahead. From before, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah you guys. Yeah. Uh, could you speak about this? Also, it's a related story with the Duki Krishna, Shamananda Prabhu, and his guru. Yeah, that's Sorry. also that's true. That's in Shamananda. That's that's actually probably a better case, because in there, there you know, with Maharaj was objecting and uh, you know, legitimate objection. I don't know, that uh, Bali Maharaj was uh, and uh, Shukra Chari was the, the god of the demons. So uh, you know, rejecting him seems like good advice <laughs> because he's giving you bad because the Shukracharya is giving you bad advice the god of the guru of the demons is giving you bad advice huh? but uh, Shamananda's guru was uh, Hridaya Chaitanya so Hridaya Chaitanya was in the Sakya Rasa they say uh, Hridaya Chaitanya Hridaya Chaitanya this is, he was a disciple of Gauridas the Gauridas Pandit 
So Goidas Pandit, his temple is in Kalna. And Kalna is in, across the river from, uh, from Shantipur. So if you, if, across the Bhagirati from Shantipur. And uh, he has one of the first Gornitai deities there, which is, kind of, which is very interesting. Because, you know, think about it. That how did Gornitai deities come about? Which is, we have Gornitai deities everywhere. But the Gornitai deities, this, uh, when, that's, when that began, so Goridas was one of the first people who had, uh, had Nitai Gaur deities, and he's one, Goridas is considered to be one of the Gopals. He was Nityananda's associate and was in the mood of Sakya Rasa. So his disciple Ridai Chaitanya was also a Sakya Rasa. The Shamananda came to him, so this is, a, often, this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about exactly, that Shamananda came to him, and Shamananda you know, didn't know the subtleties of, uh, of different bhavas and different rasas, and so, in the beginning, he was uh, uh, just accepting the, the Sakya Rasa. But when he came to Vrindavan, he became uh, and was uh, uh, associating with, uh, with, the Gos with the Goswamis and with uh, Narottam and Srinivas and, and, and so on. In the Vrindavan mood, uh, immediately he became aware of the glory of, of, uh, of the uh, Madhurya. So, when he became, started to... Uh, to uh, to uh, in, become deeply involved in smaran and so on of the Madhurya Lila, then that event took place. I imagine, you know, often when they tell these stories, you take them this, you take these stories as a as a kind of a. Like, you, you, we don't really think about them in, in, in depth, but if you t take it from a real human point of view, if you think that he was troubled. You know, he was in a position. Of, he was in a position of anxiety. He was disturbed by the fact that he had. You know, and this is what happens. This is always what happens. You should, you've done it. it always happens when you go from one particular stage to another. There's some anxiety there because you're always leaving something behind. And often, the thing that you're leaving behind is not a bad thing. But in order to progress, in order to follow your the inspiration and follow the, the, the follow the the insights that are being given to you by divine grace, you have, to, you have to leave one thing behind and go on to the other thing. And when you're doing that, you're in a position of, 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 you're in a position of anxiety. Your mind is troubled. You're not necessarily taking that very easily. My guru says, do like this. And I'm, I mean, I, for instance, I can give my own example. When I left ISKCON, for instance, I, was a, I had a position of fairly, you know, I was a sannyasi. I was, you know, I had great potential in ISKCON. If I was still in ISKCON, you know, I would have been a guru for the last 30 years, you know. But, but um, you know, at that particular point, I, I you know, I was uh, hearing from my uh, Raganuga guru, Lalita Prasad Thakur. So I, I spent about uh, quite some time. It took me almost a year to, to finally make the decision and to break away and to leave. And full knowledge, you know, that uh, that I would be condemned, and you know, a lot a lot of friends would hate me. You know, and it's actually that would happen. You know, I would meet my meet people who were very good friends in Is Iskan, and they would despise me for having left. I made that decision uh, with a great deal of trouble. Now, I didn't have any great, you know, like Shamananda. I didn't go into my meditation and have Radharani come to me, you know, and and. Uh, put her foot on my forehead and leave an imprint of, uh, a tilak imprint, of, a special tilak imprint. I didn't get that kind of uh, uh, special insight, let's say. But, nevertheless, you know, it's similar procedure. I could have done that. I just, uh, uh, you, know, at, uh, you know, at Jiva, right? At Jiva, there's this, now, I'm not going to say because I don't like these kinds of things very much. I don't people who invent their own. I don't care very much. I'm, I'm by basically I mean, probably for my ISKCON training. I'm a parampara guy. I mean, I believe in the. I believe that you have to come in parampara. I believe in sampradaya. You have to. You know. The, how can I reject Rupa Goswami? If I. I may. I never. This. This is what I'm saying about Guru Tattva also. You know. Your guru line, but you have people like Jagat Guru Kripalu, you see, who Jagat Guru Kripalu. Where is he getting everything from? You know, he's practically everything he's doing is getting from Gaudiya Shastra. He's taking Ujjal Nilmani Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. He knows these things very, very well. 
but there's no sampradaya, there's no acknowledgement. How can you, how can you, uh, 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 you know, not acknowledge the parampara? Nobody, you know, the famous saying by Isaac Newton, Isaac Newton said that uh, if I have seen far, it is because I stood on the shoulders of giants. A very good thing. So even Isaac Newton, who, you know, is considered to be the father of modern, uh, of modern physics, of uh, uh, the science of physics, even he doesn't say that I, you know, I invented it myself. He's saying it's, there was a tradition there that I took advantage of and he l l presented some new insights. So we can do that. There's no, there's no question, there's no evolution. But for one thing is that don't go, you know, if, if you're going to, you know, if there's a real evolution, if there's a genuine evolution, if it's bhakti, related to bhakti, if the evolution of bhakti is re really related to bhakti, then you will acknowledge the parampara. You'll acknowledge the you'll acknowledge the the previous acharyas. How can you not acknowledge the previous acharyas? How can I, you know, acknowledge anything about bhakti without acknowledging the acharyas who who came before me? And I include Srila Prabhupada. I'm not. I never. I would never ever dream. There's so many people who left Iskand and became, you know, so-called uh, Raghavendra oh, Bhaktas and took initiation from somebody else, and then they become, uh, uh, you know, inimical to Srila Prabhupada. And I can't. I can't tolerate that. I can't tolerate those people. So you, 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 you wouldn't even be talking about Raghavendra Bhakti if you hadn't come through that line, if you hadn't gotten that grace. So just, you know. You know, so Prabhupada said something that you don't uh, like. Okay. So Prabhupada said this or said that, you know. So, yeah. And so for that you're, going, you're, 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 you're uh, being coming inimical to him. Oh, you can't okay. do that. I, it's just I, like with your own father. I'm, oh. I'm, this is the same principle that I was talking oh, about, about okay. the Guru. Rather, your father and mother gave birth to you. You can't change that. Your father might be a drunk and an idiot, but, and you may know that he's a drunk and an idiot, you see, but he's still... You can't deny that he is the one who, you know, is your father. So, and, and because, he's, because of that, he's actually a manifestation of God, because life, your life came through that channel. So how can you deny it? Right? If you deny it, then that means you're going to have a psychological problem. If you deny it, if you can't, if you can't accept that reality, then you're going to be, you're going to always be fighting against yourself. You're going to be fighting against your own reality. You're going to be fighting against your own life. Like that. And so if you think that you can, that you can have bhakti without acknowledging even the small gurus, the minor gurus, who played a role in that, that's why a, a Vaishnava is humble, because he recognizes at, at some point that guru tattva is everywhere. That guru <coughs> tattva is not just, you know, oh, I took... My guru has eight billion disciples, that therefore, you know, I've got the greatest guru in town, you know, and therefore, you know, that makes me, that makes me really something special, you see. But everybody else is, is, is a fool and a nonsense and nobody. You know, it doesn't work like that. You know, in some, in some respects, you know, the, that's, that's what the story in the Bhagavatam about the Avanti Brahman and 24 gurus, that's what that's all about. It's about... When you get to a certain stage, when you get to a certain stage of insight, then Guru Tattva starts to manifest everywhere. As the Sadaka, how do you uh, share with others your realization of the manifestation of Guru, Guru Tattva? Well, I mean, you know, the thing about it is, is that you, you, that you don't start at the end. This is a, too, too many people, I find, uh, especially people who are kind of in the, the Buddhist uh, Advaita Vadi camp, they, they, you know, they're always talking about this kind of nirvana state or something, and, uh, you know, and they always seem to be pretending that that's where they are, and that they've understood everything, because you know, everything all is one and so on like that. You know? So we, we can talk about a, a, a very elevated state of consciousness and so on, but uh, sadhaka is, sadhaka, you know, it's true, you follow discipline, and guru means discipline. So yeah, stay, you stay within the discipline of the guru tattva for as long as, for as long as, I mean, I'm talking about a situation that may come up, it doesn't necessarily come up, you have to finish your business at one level before you go on to the next one. 
Hey, you know, people who are going from one, flitting from one guru to another, they're not in a better position. Doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are, uh, that they are wiser or following any higher truth. Quite often it means that they're just plain confused. You know, they, they're just plain confused. They're not, they're not progressing. They're just going from one side to another. You know, it's like, like a, the, their attention span is short. And so they, you know, I got this, and I don't know, now this, now this, you know, and it's kind of like it's not a progressive path, but it's a, you know, a, a shifting sidewards type of thing. So you, you really, the, the best principle is to, you know, follow a discipline for as long as, as you, uh, as it's meaningful, as long as it, as long as it wor is workable. That's what it means. I mean, obviously, like I'm, like the story of Shamananda was meant to show, that the sh story of Shamananda means that there's that there that before you and and the story of the gopis also, and the Sarva Dharma and Paritajya also, because the whole story of the Bhagavad Gita really is about rejecting gurus, right? That's really what the story of Bhagavad Gita is. Arjuna is saying, I don't want to kill my guru. Drona and Bhishma, and Krishna says, kill your gurus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Bhagavad Gita is all about. Sarva Dharma and Parichyasya, what does that mean? <laughs> because Krishna, the, and, 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 the, and the point of the Bhagavad Gita, you see, because the Bhagavad Gita, if you look at it allegorically, all right, now mostly we don't look at it allegorically, but think of the Bhagavad Gita allegorically. And it's so correct that the Gita should be looked at allegorically because the, the, it's based on the Upanishad verse. The Upanishad verse says that there's a chariot, that's the body, and the horses are the senses, and that the chariot driver is the, is the, is the buddhi, is the intelligence, and that the jiva is the, is the passenger in the chariot. So there you have the passenger in the chariot is Arjuna, and Krishna is the intelligence. Why is Krishna, um, how do I say that Krishna is the intelligence in Bhagavad Gita? Because he's always talking about intelligence. And what does he say? The Nami Buddhi Yogam Tam. He says in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Eshate Bhita Sankhye Buddhi Yoga Imang Sranu. So, so the whole thing, and, and if you look at the second chapter, always talking about Buddhi, Buddhi, Buddhi. So the, the point, Krishna, is, is that this is exactly what I'm talking about, but the higher intelligence coming from within. That's the ultimate authority. That's what the Bhagavad Gita is telling you. <laughs> so if you don't listen to this, you lie to yourself. What? If you don't listen to your... Yeah. You lie to us because of ego. Yeah. Because of what we Yes, exactly. So we need to be purified in order to properly understand. So therefore, you take the external guru, the guru that the, it's not, the, 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 the Bhagavad Gita doesn't deny because Krishna, Arjuna, externally surrenders to Krishna as guru. Mm -hmm. That's that's also part of the whole thing. Tadvidi pranipate na. That's also there in the, in the Bhagavad Gita. But the, the the guru, the external guru, functions as a guide to your internal guru. He helps you to understand to to understand to clear your clear your mind. To, to, to clarify things so that you know uh, what to, uh, which path to follow. But then you get when you get that guidance. But at some point, at some point, you can't even. I mean, to what extent can the guru give you uh, guidance? The guru can give you general guidance, but can he give you specific guidance to particular things? Like, should I uh, uh, should I take this job or not take this job? Should I buy this car or not buy this car? Should I go to India or not go to India? You know? I mean, you can ask your guru, but he's not going to help, I'm telling you. You know, he may say, yes, do it. Of course, that's, you know, in a minor thing that can happen. But when the decisions start getting more and more complicated, you can't even explain them half the time. So, so, the, so the, process of, the process that takes place of uh, accessing your intelligence is something that, as an independent individual, as a fully manifested self uh, regulated and uh, and uh, spiritually um, mature individual, you can't always be depending on somebody else. You know, like oh, well, Guruji, what did I? You know, I have to cross the street. You know, should I cross the street here or cross the street there? You know, that's that's the sign of a person who's not particularly mature. So the guru is guiding you to, to spiritual maturity, not to infant, not to infantilism, 
This is one of the things that we see so often, so that people are talking about you know, how, how gurus infant, infantilize their disciples. But that's completely uh, uh, you know, a corruption of the guru tattva. Okay. More, you want to discuss more? So. <laughs> With my school guru, my school guru. Uh, as soon as I went through the other to the other side, the other the parents, side, yeah, crossed to the other side, the dark yeah. side. So I, I, went, I went there a few times, uh, but the vibe of Puri Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. And this was the end because I, like, <laughs> I shouldn't go there. No. Mm. And but I, it, I was so attracted. I never felt so much attraction toward any devotee. The and then I couldn't then listen. No, don't go there. Prabhupada didn't want it. Yeah. And then I met also Shandari Maharaja to then Diksha for me. Mm-hmm. I couldn't stay there, you know, this. So, meh, like a sheep. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. So sometimes it's easy. Like for the gopis, it was easy. They heard the flute, they didn't stop for a second. So they're glorified because it was easy for them, to, because for them, even though the, the, the problem was so great, and that's what's always emphasized about the gopis, that as young girls, you know, they're, you have to think that these are young girls, you know, they're young girls, they're just newly married mostly, they're in the Indian fa- extended family tradition, the, the, the social norms are very, very tight, way tighter than we could even imagine in the West today. But even so, even in the West today, we still have social norms that we, you know, to become a Hare Krishna back in the 60s and 70s, this was, you know, like, a, you know, your, but even, but even then I would say that for us, for me personally, it was not a hard decision to make. I'd already more or less discarded the, the, the attachment to the conventional life. So becoming a devotee was easy, but even so, you know, for, for, for most people that would be a drastic step to take. So the drastic step, so, f- so for the gopis, the gopis have the most drastic step to take. And still they do it, their attraction to Krishna is so strong, Krishna's flute has grabbed their mind so intensely that they just drop everything and like the rivers flowing to the sea, they, they, goes, they, they torrents like a current of the, like the Ganges, flowing from the mountains and down to the sea. That's the way they went to Krishna. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it, it appears to be easy like that. And sometimes it's more difficult. So for Shamananda I would say it was probably a little more difficult because then there, were, there was tension afterwards, right? So he knew, he probably recognized, he probably knew beforehand that his guru was not going to appreciate this. That his guru had given him, you know, something that was valuable, that meant a lot to him, you know, in Sakya Rasa and so on, and, and and now he was going off into, he was going over to the dark side of Madhurya Rasa, and so he had to come back, and it was there was a tussle, there was an argument, and ultimately there had to be, you know, uh, some intervention from higher authorities like Jiva Goswami. Okay, let's stop. <laughs>